So No Mercy is this Sunday. And I assume I'm not the only one whose excitement level is about... I mean, I look at this show on paper and I say, Lord have mercy. Or have mercy on all of us that are actually going to be foolish enough to watch this on Sunday night. Because this show looks stupid. And before I even talk about the actual show, when I went to the WWE website to try and set this preview up and figure out what all the matches were, there were glaring omissions. At, at the time that I looked, I didn't see Elias having a match. It's pretty hard to walk with the guy if he doesn't get a match on the damn show. And I don't see where he's going to have one and just uh, randomly throw one in there at the 11th hour. That's not how you make stars, damn it. And then of all things, the freaking Hardys, as of now, as I saw it, don't have an announced match on the main card or even that damn pre-show. This is how stupid this company is. One of the real highlights of WrestleMania 33 was the return of the Hardys after several years of being away. It was a big pop. It was a great moment. You've brought them back. They're the new tag team champions. All is wonderful in the world to where we have regressed so much and devolved so much that just in a few short months, we took the Hardys for being one of the most interesting and refreshing things about the product to where their curtain jerking the SummerSlam pre-show where 95% of the audience wasn't in the arena in time to be able to watch the damn match to now no mercy less than six months after WrestleMania I don't even see where these guys have an announced match on the card now maybe they do and maybe I'm just completely out of left field here but what, what's the match against the jobbers, the, the ball club? How in the hell can you take a commodity, a property like the Hardy Boys and borderline make it irrelevant in less than six months? I mean, that is a truly, truly special kind of stupid that could only come from the WWE. And every other wrestling company out there does a lot of stupid shit. And don't fool yourself into thinking otherwise. Even you Meltzer cucking New Japan nut huggers. Don't get it twisted. That company does stupid shit too. But when it comes to sheerly obvious stupidity and dropping of the ball, nobody, and I mean nobody, touches Titan Towers and their ever-loving stupidity. It is unbelievable. And, and again, I look at this card, it's more like, Lord, have mercy, have mercy on our souls. Um, where's the mercy to us as fans? You take Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt. Reportedly, Triple H isn't all that happy about how Finn Balor's been treated by the company. That's one of his boys. A uh, Hunter, may, did you ever think that maybe the reason the guy's being treated like this is because he isn't any fucking good or he most certainly isn't as good as you and a lot of the other hardcore bullet club circle jerkers want to make it out to fucking believe that he is. If you think that this is going to be a major coming out party for Finn Balor, boy, have I got news for you. There's only one type of coming out party that should happen for him at no mercy, and it is not the rabbit hole that you're trying to go down, believe me. And as far as Bray Wyatt, as much as everybody talks about how boring Roman is or can be, and that most certainly is true, and they talk about how they don't change anything with him, and that he's packaged and featured always the same, there's no nuance, there's no evolution or change to the character, and again, people are mostly accurate and correct on this one. Look at fucking Bray Wyatt. Like, this company cannot help but to do the exact same mediocre, boring, dumb shit with this guy. At some point in time, just because when the lights go out, a bunch of people take out their cell phones and here comes the fireflies, doesn't mean that the shit is any good. Because as soon as the lights come on and the bell rings, the crowd goes. 
between his stupid fucking laughter that is overdone to an excessive degree to so many rambling promos that make no sense, even if you look at him from a nonsensical, illogical viewpoint, to the character itself that is just dumb, that you've made to be completely and totally insignificant, yet you continue to pound him the same fucking way and have done so for years. Not once has the guy had a fucking baby face change. Not once has the guy had any type of major evolution or change in his character whatsoever. Only this company would take something that is not really working and continue to double down because that's what they want to fucking do. Like, who operates a business like that? The WWE does. So that's one match. No fucks given. Cruiserweight title. The reason some people are turning on Enzo is because the WWE has made it that way. And it's not just solely because of them letting people talk about his backstage heat on TV via the commentators, via Cass, and via others, The Miz, so forth. It's not just that. Even Enzo talking about himself. The WWE also made sure that that news got leaked. Look, I'm going to put it to you this way. It's time to smarten up, idiots, in 2017. The vast majority of the information that is leaked about WWE is leaked by WWE. And if you don't think that's true, and if you don't think that's the case, then I don't know what the hell to tell you other than I've got a great deal on some volcano insurance for you in fucking Rhode Island, all right? The reason there's so much focus on Enzo's backstage heat is because WWE wanted to make it that way to intentionally sabotage the guy because he fucking annoys him and pisses him off. It doesn't matter if he's over as a character. It doesn't matter if he moves merch. It's all about them wanting to do it their way. It is so fucking stupid. And you even started to see that it's starting to affect the character a little bit. And it just blows my ever-loving mind. And, and, and people are getting caught up in this and not realizing that the reason this got leaked out there to the dirt sheets and the wrestling media is because the WWE leaked it. Directly and indirectly. They were responsible for all that information getting out there because they wanted it to get out there. So now you get to this match between Enzo and Neville, which should be more interesting on the surface than it really is. A real contrast in style is one guy that can wrestle and Enzo. Um... <laughs> But a guy in Neville that has really worked and honed his craft that should be the gold standard of a strong cruiserweight division that should be a star for this company. He's fucking not because this company is too fucking stupid to pull their heads out of their rears and do something to make that cruiserweight division what it should be, which is at least a fair and decent compliment to either brand Raw or SmackDown doesn't matter. And to where now you would have Enzo coming in, bringing something different to the table. Now you've got one of those dynamics where the WWE is trying to force you to hate Enzo to where you're almost trying to get you to cheer Neville and you're almost working on this weird babyface heel double switch type of stipulation, which to me at this point doesn't work for either freaking guy. And this match that on the surface should be interesting to me, I just largely don't care about now. So thanks a lot for that one, WWE. Raw Tag Team Championship, Sheamus and Cesaro versus Ambrose and Rollins. I realize some of the people in the live audiences seem to care, but, you know, I got to be honest, again, when half of the audience isn't fucking there, meaning half of your arenas or more are being empty now pretty much every single week, every show, whether it's television, taping, or house show, how over are these guys really and truly? And how good is the act really? Look, these guys were so bad on their own and the company screwed them up and mangled them up so bad as well on their own that we had to try and reunite them as a group to try and get some pathetic nostalgia pops for something that happened three four years ago that really wasn't all that great and not really worth all that much nostalgia i'm sorry that's the way it fucking is so now they're the tag champs and who cares sheamus and cesaro versus ram ambrose and rollins might be a very good match in terms of, in theory, just based off of the action if you're into getting your jollies on that type of shit. But ultimately, when the nut cutting comes to happen, who cares? I gotta look at the IC title match, Jason Jordan versus The Miz. We only just now, this past Monday on Raw, started to incorporate the elements of, oh my freaking God, after weeks and weeks of buildup, to Kurt Angle's big announcement, which was that he had an illegitimate bastard mixed baby. 
makes him a hero in my heart. Just saying. We just all of a sudden remembered, hey, you know, Kurt Angle's a Hall of Famer, a legend. You might want to incorporate him and his son on television together a little bit more than we have. You got Jason Jordan and The Miz. They're trying to package Jason Jordan one way. And honestly, it's not working. And honestly, I don't know if packaging him a different way would matter because this is a WWE. So what the fuck makes you think that it's going to work that way either? And then you've got The Miz and you look at The Miz and we couldn't even bother with getting around to getting him a match on the pay-per-view until the Raw before No Mercy. Be on question your mid-card MVP in all of WWE, and most specifically on the Raw brand. One of your best pure talents that you have, which some might say is an indication of how bad things have gotten, and perhaps you're right. But the fact is, he is. I don't give a shit what any of you fuckheads say. The fact that it takes until six days before your pay-per-view, your special event on the network, to give him a freaking match just speaks volumes to the stupidity and lack of prioritization of this company. And, and I will say I will be intrigued a little bit by this match, but it should be so much more than what it's ultimately going to be. This five way for the Raw women's title. You know, they were they they were so happy about Emma being in this spot. Did they even put her on Raw Monday night? I don't remember her being there. Bailey returns, big <laughs> to me. Sasha Banks is in the match, another big <laughs> to me. Don't talk to her fans. Don't ask for her autograph. And sure as fuck, don't ask Sam Roberts for his opinion about Bailey and Sasha Banks. This is a mega powers, brother. Give me a fucking break. That's how stupid this shit has gotten. People have no dignity. They'll sell out their soul for a little bit of WWE Network FaceTime and screen time. Well, you never have to worry about that shit coming from me. They ain't calling me. And even if they did, they can stick it up their fucking ass. They don't have enough money for me to put up with their bullshit. If it requires me having to sit there and tweet out about how these two fucking bitches are the new mega powers, then I don't want any part of that life, believe me. Like, this whole thing should be about Nia Jax beating Alexa Bliss and be get, finally getting her moment and becoming the Raw Women's Champion. And that may happen, but they may very well just go to fucking... You know what? I don't even know what the fuck they're doing at this point. This company is so goddamn lazy. Instead of creating maybe two women's feuds to give you two matches on this show, why double the effort when you could half-ass it, which his company loves to do, and just throw five women together even though, yeah, fuck it, whatever. It's unbelievable. But what is the single most unbelievable thing about this company? And... and it astounds me. And we could talk about Transformer movies until we're blue in the freaking face. We could talk about John Cena has this going on. John Cena has that going on. I don't care about any of that. The fact that this company threw out John Cena versus Roman Reigns in the fashion capacity that it did at the time that it did is just astounding. And is it resonating? Is it working? Well, the half-empty venues that they're performing in for Raw each week tell you all you need to know. It paints the picture with the broadest freaking brush, doesn't it? How stupid. Like John Cena versus Roman Reigns. You're building up to this big singles match. If you were going to do that, then do it at freaking SummerSlam. If you couldn't wait until WrestleMania... Then do it at SummerSlam. This whole program has been stupid to me because all these years later, it's still about Cena and, and clearly your hard on is for Roman Reigns now, but you still can't quit Cena. Apparently, hashtag breakfast club rules, bitches, still applies. But you've structured so many things to make Cena look good, so many of these things to make Reigns look so bad. Why in the fuck would you intentionally sabotage the guy that you've had main event three straight WrestleManias? Why in the hell would you sabotage the guy in this fashion? It makes no sense to me. Because when it came time for Cena to be that top guy and to ascend to that throne, they never fucking sabotaged him. It didn't matter if it was Sean, Hunter, JBL. It did not fucking matter. Cena was doing the sabotage and nobody was sabotaging him. It is just ridiculous and incredible that now all of these years later, of course, 
because it doesn't do Cena any good with the hardcore fans that even though he pretends he doesn't care about are his fucking everything and he's still trying to please so stubbornly after all these years. It's why he will lose occasionally to a Kevin Owens and AJ Styles, a Shinsuke Nakamura, but not other guys when it really matters like a Ryback or a Wade Barrett or some other dudes like a Rusev or Bray Wyatt. Why? Because he wants to appease you fucking hardcore Omega Cuck, Meltzer Cuck, New Japan fuckboys. That's why. Because there is an intrinsic value and benefit to Cena to putting those guys over. Even if it's not the best thing to do for business. But everything we've done here with this whole program with John Cena and Roman Reigns almost makes you think that Cena would be the one to go over at no mercy. And frankly, at this point in time, that might as well be what they fucking do. Because there is no way, shape, or form. You can look at how what they've done with Roman Reigns and say, they've been treating him like he's the future. They've been treating him like he's the big star. Everything they've done has led you to believe that they believe that John Cena is still the fucking guy. It is 2017. This is over a decade plus. The dude is 40. He clearly wants to go to Hollywood. Stop making it all about fucking him. It's unbelievable and it's fucking ridiculous. And I swear to God, if that goddamn phone doesn't stop ringing when I'm bitching about the WWE. Unbelievable. You would think after 10 rings, they would get the message, I'm not answering the phone. Just saying. Just like the WWE doesn't answer the bell when it comes to creating, making new fucking stars. And it's because of all these years later, they still can't get over their John Cena fix. There's John Cena hard on. They still can't get the fucking point that it can't just be about this dude. And honestly, when it's been about this dude for so many years, no matter how many of the Cena nut hookers come out of the woodworks to try and tell you otherwise... He has been disastrous to the brand. He has been disastrous to the company's business, their bottom line, period. He's been their prop that they've elevated for so many freaking years. And yet all the while, all these years later, when he should be approaching legend status, he's wrestling in half-empty fucking arenas. Give me a fucking break. One of the best of all time, legend my fucking ass. True legends at the height of their power won't have to have half of a damn arena tarped off and fucking cut off and close off the entire upper deck and send everybody over to the camera side because otherwise half of that side would look empty if you had half the people over here. Give me a fucking break. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And everything about this, the hot shotting of the angle, the hurrying it, is just unbelievable to me. And then we get to the universal title. And as much as it's going to be easy for people to blame Roman Reigns for the attendance problems, you know, well, let's blame John Cena because he's part of the one of the two feature programs here. Let's blame Brock Lesnar, too. He's been the universal champion since WrestleMania. And the shit hasn't been good. He's not a good world champion for this company, no matter how much the Brock fucking nut huggers want to try and tell you otherwise. This shit gets lame, it gets boring, it's repetitive, it's predictable. It's just not compelling or interesting. It just isn't. And clearly, from a business standpoint, from a viewership standpoint, it clearly screams out to you, it's not working. So if this company wants to truly validate that they don't fucking care, they will take Roman Reigns, who they have tried to sabotage at every step during this John Cena angle, and have him go over Sunday, and then they will make sure that the guy that they've gone out of their way to sabotage to make Cena look good for some fucking reason goes on to WrestleMania after I'm sure he would win the fucking Royal Rumble again. <laughs> so that way he could face... One of the most irrelevant, alleged, big-time draw can't fill half the fucking arena world champions they've had in some time in Brock fucking Lesnar. Like, if the WWE actually follows through with Brock versus Roman at WrestleMania 34, they deserve everything they fucking get. They deserve everything they fucking get. They absolutely do. Because there is no way, shape, or form that this company can argue that that is best for business at this point. Because these guys and other big time programs isn't equaling shit for business. The only logical approach here to take with this main event, there is only one logical approach. And that is for Braun Strowman to go out and beat the shit out of Brock Lesnar, pin Brock Lesnar, become the new universal champion, and then as an Adam Bodus, have Paul Heyman ditch Brock Lesnar and align himself with fucking Braun Strowman. Or even if you don't throw that part in, it doesn't fucking matter. The bottom line is... There is a time to strike and the iron is hot. It's still kind of warm, even though he's not feuding with Roman Reigns. 
There was a lot of buzz about Braun Strowman. Even with the half-empty fucking arenas, the time has come. It's not working with Brock. It's not going to get any better for another six months. You try to force it down people's throats until you get Roman versus Brock 2 at WrestleMania 34. You have to have Braun Strowman win on Sunday. And if this company doesn't, then they deserve the disastrous results that would come. They deserve whatever the hell they would get. And surely somebody from WWE is watching some part of this video. And believe me, folks, I'm not just saying that to be arrogant. There are people within the company whose job is to pay attention to the internet. And they watch videos from all types of people up to and including me. I know this. I know this. Hopefully they're paying attention. We go back and forth for so many years. And so many times I say things. And then when you do them, they work. But when you don't do them, they don't work. And we're fucking surprised when they don't work. This is clearly one of those times where I think most logical people would agree, hashtag Schleg Daddy is right. Braun Strowman must win Sunday because at this point in time, if nothing else, if you change your mind, you can put the belt right back on Brock at the next freaking pay-per-view. Honestly. What do you have to lose? The answer is very simply nothing. Having Roman win and then having Brock retain his belt, you're just going to lose more fans. And if that is what this company decides to do, then have mercy on them because business is only going to bottom out from here. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you expect out of this freaking crap fest that looks like no mercy. Um, remember, I'm the Schleg Daddy. This is OTR Central, and this is not just the wrestling show you want. It's the wrestling show you need. See, it's so bad, I can't even get my own uh, close-off phrase correctly. Not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. And for a lot of you, this is the important thing to remember. I'll make sure I get this right. For you, 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 all of you! Come Sunday, I watch so you don't have to. Just remember that.